that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. The Holy Ghost was talking to people back then. But the Holy Ghost was not given in the broader sense of Pentecost. But the Holy Ghost was still in the picture doing the work of God as a messenger, as a power, as a guide, as a light. The Holy Ghost was over here talking to Simeon. He says, uh, good old boy, you're going to see the Savior before you die. Well, he was an old guy, so, you know, he's thinking, well, I, I ain't seen him yet. But the Holy Ghost was talking, and he was listening. The Holy Ghost is talking. Are you listening? Are you listening? And this is important for us today. There's lots of religion all around us. But is the Holy Ghost talking? That's what we really need to be searching for, reaching for, uh, assessing for, uh, opening up for. The Holy Ghost talking. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost. Actually, you know, what has the Holy Ghost revealed to you? Uh, anything of late? Well, uh, come think of it, I don't even know what the Holy Ghost looks like. Well, you're not going to see him. Has the Holy Ghost said anything to you lately? You say, well, I'm not sure I know even what the Holy Ghost sounds like. Well, then I guess you better figure out what it means to hear from the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost said unto him, you're not going to see death before he had seen Christ. The Holy Ghost was giving him information. The Holy Ghost was giving him prophecy. The Holy Ghost was giving him direction. Giving him direction. So, it's safe to say that we're going to have to ask for God to talk to us via the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit needs to be talking to us in today's context. At the very beginning, the Holy Ghost was already at work doing what the Holy Ghost does. The Holy Ghost does what I can't do. God's Spirit will do what He was assigned to do, what He is a part of that's going to be done. The Holy Spirit is going to do His work. We need a Holy Spirit mindedness. Now, we're very culturally minded, church culture minded. That's good. You all look good, smell good. Sound good, sing well, you're mannerly, you're considerate, you're generous, you're intelligent. I don't see a dumb person in here. You're intelligent, intelligent, intelligent. Well, good, that means that we're good candidates for God's Spirit to come talk to, to work with, to fire up, to give direction to, to lead, guide, and direct every day. Simeon was such a man, and the Holy Spirit was uh, right there talking to him. Just talking to him. Start opening up. Start cultivating. Start cultivating an openness to the voice and the work of the Holy Ghost today. Cultivate an openness. So let's go on reading here. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now... Let us now, thy servant, depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. In verse 32, a light to lighten the Gentiles. So, this experience here was going to be translated beyond those walls and beyond that particular sect of religion and beyond that whole nation of people 
and beyond that country and region and go out into the entire world. A light to lighten the Gentiles, non-Jewish people were going to benefit from this particular experience here that was happening. This Christ was going to be to the <coughs> tribes of the world. You wouldn't know it by looking at some of my tribes. You wouldn't know they've had opportunity, but even they got opportunity. Yeah. A light to lighten the Gentiles. And Christ Jesus, the Son of God, brought us a universal plan, a universal plan. So, the door is open for everybody. The door is open for all people, all tribes, all nations, all languages, some, all uh, sections of the country, all the states. The door is open. we got to understand that so that we'll have an openness. If you try to, if you try to uh, lock God up in a box by any particular doctrine or region or way or people or tribe or country or religion, you're starting down the wrong road. You're starting down the wrong road. This gospel of Jesus Christ is for all people. Now. Us holiness preachers that have been indoctrinated real good, we really love to box people up. We do. I understand that. That's how I learned Bible school. That's how I learned Christianity. That's how I learned preaching. That's how I learned missionary work. That's how I learned soul winning. So like uh, Crystal does, you know, every year for the Christmas boxes. She says, okay, folks, we're going to box them. We're going to gather all these gifts, then we're going to box them up. It's kind of our attitude about people and souls, you know. So, all right, let's gather them all in here. And she says, all oh, right, good. Look at all these people. Now let's box them up. And send them out. Well, what are they going to do? They're all boxed up. They can't do anything. you got to let people be who they are. You gotta let people be what they are. You gotta let God the Holy Ghost do the job that He came to this world to do. God the Holy Ghost is not going to prepare people for heaven that are not prepared to go there. When the Holy Ghost does a job, it's a good enough job for that person to get into heaven, whether you say anything about it or not. We gotta learn the work of the Holy Spirit and what He's here to do, and that He can actually do this thing. Lord, to understand yes. the universal plan for all nations, all people, what a powerful message for the world. First of all, it's hope. It's hope here today. Amen. I learned Christianity in a frame of hope and help and power and strength and the blessing of God, but I also learned Christianity from a box of men attitude, too. So by the time I entered into the door here and came out the door over here, I had my box already. <coughs> you don't fit the box. So you don't have the Holy Ghost. Now who am I to say that? I'm nobody. Help us, Lord. This is not how this works. The Holy Spirit was sent by God to the world to give hope. 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 And if your hope of help and your hope of Christianity and your hope of heaven is no higher than me and what I say, and what I say you can do and not do, if that's any higher than your hope, then you're in trouble. Because I'm not that smart a guy. And if you're not in trouble yet, I'll get you there. <laughs> Unless the Lord helps me. Understand something, folk. How good is your hope? What is the quality of hope you give to anybody who knows you love the Lord and you're talking to them? Do you give hope? Are we giving hope? Am I any kind of avenue or messenger of hope to you or anybody? Do I message hope to you? I like this. A sign I saw on a billboard that says fear is contagious. 
And then someone made a comment, hope is too. Hope is contagious. So you've got a lot of people that are trusting the Lord, following Christ, doing Christianity, reading about, singing and praying, but they're fearful. And they're spreading fear. Well, Becky, I'm afraid you're going to go out and live for the devil. If you know, if, if I really honestly, if I'm fearful that way about it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to tell. You know, she'll kind of start to get the life. I don't really have no confidence in it. And I'm all fearful about everything and everybody. Fearful you can't do your own job. Can't think your own thoughts. Can't make your own prayers. Can't make your own decisions. Can't have your own walk with God. If I am a fear monger, it don't take long for that to catch hold. It don't take long. But hope. The message was to, this Jesus was to lighten. Give life to the Gentiles. That means you and I. We don't have to be of that Jewish sect in order to have God. The Gentiles are all the peoples of the world. Hope is given. Hope is given. Are you a messenger of hope? Are you a message of hope? Do people get hope in God through you and by you and around you and from you and through you? Is hope a power in your heart and life? Help us, Lord. Hope is contagious. Hope is contagious, gives purpose and participation in a glorious plan. Praise the Lord. Well, we're going to have to brighten up a little bit. But you can't brighten up when you have no hope. No hope. Yeah. What keeps a marriage going? Anybody? Think about it a little bit. What keeps a good marriage going? A bigger stick. A what? A bigger stick. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, it may. For a little while. <laughs> good. Yeah, all good. All good. Yeah, you don't respect that doesn't matter if you have the other stuff. You know, you're not going to do anywhere in America. It doesn't matter who you are. Yeah. You did it okay. in this group. All right. There's some thoughts. <laughs> a little radical, but that's just some good, good thoughts. Thanks. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what uh, makes a marriage better is hope that it can get better. Hope that it can get better. What makes a friendship better? Same thing. The hope that it can get better. When you find someone who's hopeless. You are talking to a very dismal, down in the heart, down in the mind, overshadowed, just miserable person. A hopeless person is a miserable person. That's right. But, you know, this Jesus Christ that uh, the Christmas story is all about was a plan, was a hope for the whole world. And you and I have to become messengers of hope. The Holy Ghost working in us will become hope for somebody. If you're confident in faith, people look on and listen to your attitude, they listen to what you say, and they hear your hope. They hear your hopefulness. Amen. Hopefulness. It's contagious. It's catching. I have hope that it'll get better. Maybe not everything here, but individuals in here can get better. Well, uh, does it work? Well, sure it works. Just like I said. If you have hope that your friendship, your relationship, your marriage can get better, and you operate off that hope, then that's the direction you'll go. That's the direction you'll go if you have hope. You say, well, does it ever fail? Well, in the earthly realm, you won't win every time. I had hope some friendships could get better. Married, they didn't all get better. <laughs> Some that I hoped would get better, just kind of went all the other way and clear out of my life. I said, well, does that mean you were a smashing failure? Maybe, I don't know. But if you're talking people, it's never just one side. Yeah. But hope, 
On the other hand, hope is an upward lift. Hope is a positive lift. Hope is a light direction. Hope is a true direction. Hope is a liberty, liberating direction. So then, the gospel of Jesus Christ is a powerful message to the world around us of hope for purpose and for participation in a glorious plan. Praise the Lord. Hope for purpose and participation. I've said this before, one of the things that brought me into the kingdom was just the good spirit of God's people. And I just felt it in my heart. I wish I could be a part of this. Hope. Will the Holy Spirit be able to give a message of hope through you? Or are you one of those that just, like, just love to whine and complain? Any whiners in there? I'm the only one with my hand up. All right, everyone volunteer. There's a few. Well, it's not, you know, it's nothing to brag about. It's nothing to brag about by any means. Yeah, you ought to try to get, it, get over it if you're a whiner. You say, well, I lift my hand, but I don't want to admit it. That's okay, just so long as you know. Just so long as you know it, and you make a decision. That, I'm sick and tired of this. I am going to get out of this. This whining. And start praising. Lifting up. Edifying. Spreading a little bit of hope. Even if it's a little bit. Even if it's a little bit of hope. A little bit of hope. You know Paul's been having tough days. Do you make him more miserable by whining on his shoulders? Even a little bit. Holy Spirit wants to give people hope. There's got to be a new life somewhere. There's a lot of miserable people looking for help. And there's a lot of miserable people in the church that are looking for help. They don't have much hope. The salvation and the Christianity they practice is that little boxy kind that's failing them today. But the Holy Spirit is life. The Holy Spirit is power. The Holy Spirit is hope. And when you have the Holy Spirit, you are a messenger of hope. It's hope. Hope of peace. A lot of people don't have peace in their hearts today. They have no hope of getting it in the life they've got. Hope of peace. Are you a messenger? A hope of peace. But then, he goes on to say, and there's guidance. Guidance is a universal law. Universal law rules for the culture. Guidance. The Holy Spirit in Jesus Christ, from Jesus Christ, gives all mankind a universal law. That's rules for culture. Rules for culture. Indian people have this saying a lot of times. They say, well, I'm like this because I'm Indian. I say, no, you're not. You're like that because you're stinking selfish. <laughs> yeah, a lot of times cultures like to think, well, this is just the way we are as a culture. We steal. That's a part of our culture. <laughs> Who said you could steal? So well, we've always done that. Culture is not universal unless it's God. Cultures have their own ideas about things. Church cultures have their own ideas about things. Uh, what's evil and sinful and wicked and worldly over here, over here, is all, uh -huh. what's the problem? What's wrong with you guys? And this other outfit, what's wrong with you guys? Who's right? Who is the law? Who is the rule? But this Savior, Jesus Christ, was a light. He was guidance. He was universal law. Universal law covers all tribes, all territories, all states, all cultures. There shall be no other gods before me. Have no other gods before me. The Creator. Thou shalt not take him to thee any graven image whether you make it or someone else makes it. No false gods. Universal law. 
back in the Second World War when the uh, people that had wreaked so much destruction in the world were on trial for their crimes. Many of those leaders, officers, they said, we were just doing what our culture said to do. Our culture said to kill these people. We, we just did what our culture said to do. The judges said, there is a law beyond mankind. There is a law beyond mankind. You have violated this law by slaughtering these people. You will die. Universal law. That's for all created human beings, all cultures, all churches, all towns, all families. Amen. So if going down to a neighbor's house and sticking a knife in their tire, letting out all their hair, if that's wrong for non-native people, is it wrong for Indians? go out and let the people with the hair out of their tires. Can Indians do it and be okay? A lot of them think they can. A lot of them think they can do all these dark things over here. Well, wow, that's just because we're Indians. No, it's not. It's just because you're wicked. Stinking liar. Cultures are not the rule, folks. God. Jesus Christ, the perfect Savior, the almighty perfect God, is the law, universal for all peoples, all nations, and all ages. It's guidance. Universal law is guidance and it's rules for culture. Church cultures as well. You know, if churches understood this a little better, they could probably harmonize themselves a little better. There would be more mass times of intercession. If everybody, if everybody that professed the name of Jesus Christ as a, as a religion were to say, we are having a mass prayer of intercession for our country down at the auditorium, down at the stadium, the Bengal Stadium in Cincinnati, Ohio, could hold like 45, 50,000 people. A lot of people anyway. If a call went out and said, we are having a mass prayer of intercession. You believe God, come down to the station, come down to the stadium. We're going to have prayer. What do you think? Unity like that would have some kind of power in our world. But no, we got these little uh, stolen backwards churches that won't let anybody else in because they can't think like that. Got these little struggling groups that don't want anybody new in because they don't think exactly like them. We're the only ones that are making things happen. Oh, really? If what's going on around us is your prayer is being answered, we're in bigger trouble than we thought. Help us, Lord. Guidance, universal law, rules for culture. That if we could understand this, we could get God, the Holy Ghost, working and doing things that we can't even dream of for what He could do. Last, the old prophet, he says, Now my eyes have seen a Savior. You can take me home. I'm satisfied he's here to do the work he sent him to do for all peoples. Jesus came, and Jesus is accountability. What did you do with your light? We said it in another message before. When you get to the end, when you get to judgment, it's not going to be a matter of how much you did, what you did, how you did, why you did it, the way you did it. What did, you, what did the words of Scripture say? Depart from me. What? I don't know you. I don't know you. We're going to be judged in relational terms. In relational terms. 
not by performance terms. Performance is a part of your relational context, what you are. And the judge said, I don't know you. Get him out of here. Get her out of here. I don't know who that is. Relational terms. I did all this. I did that. Why? I pastored these people all these years. I dedicated babies and baptized people, read scriptures, held dinners and visited hospitals. And I did all this. Does that count for anything? It counts for nothing if you don't know the Savior personally, relationally, one to one. Our friends in Jesus possessed of the Holy Spirit, possessed by the Holy Ghost. We'll be judged on relational terms first. And then I suppose, uh, however much good you do, maybe you crown me bigger than mine, I really don't care. Have all the crowns you want. Have all the trophies you want. Have all the land you want. Just let me be a part of the crowd. I want to be known. I want to be known by the one. A lot of other people don't know me. Millions of people don't know me, don't care. And I don't really feel too bad about that. As long as Christ knows me, and as long as he knows my voice, Lord, talk to you these years. I want to know you better. Praise the Lord. Accountability. What did you do with your life? Accountability is what did you do with your life? Did you take the light of the gospel? Did you take the light of the preaching, of the praying, of the worshiping, of the singing, of the courses, of the songs, of, of the lessons? Did you take the light and turn it into getting closer to the Savior? Mm -hmm. You know something? When you get closer to the Savior, you just start automatically becoming more like Him. Everybody I've ever seen that truly fell in love with the Lord started falling in love with people. Well, you can go home and chew on that for as long as you need to chew on it. Just think on it deeply. Everybody who really fell in love with the Lord deeper became a lover of people. When that happens, you can't stop hope from spilling out. You can't stop intercession from happening. You can't hold the power back when that starts to happen. Accountability. Yeah. I don't know. There's a lot of things uh, I do, and you might think, well, you're kind of a strange guy. But I look for favor from an individual. Any of you that have a neighbor or close friend, you're always working for favor, approval, or just acceptance, or hope. When you start to understand the relational context of the gospel of Jesus Christ and being saved and sanctified and all this that we talk about, most of it's just talking language. But when it comes right down to it, it's loving God and God loving people through you. You become more of a people person once you begin to understand salvation's plan. And when you become accountable, you start being used by God to bring people in, give them hope, lighten their heart and life, and give them strength and power to carry on. You say things like, What? You messed up? Get back up. Get back up. You're okay. Dust you off a little bit. Get back up. Make a few adjustments. Might be an I'm sorry. It might be a discard. It might be a take another route. Make some adjustments. And then set your face and move on. Praise the Lord again. You become a lover of people and a messenger of hope strength and power. The old prophet, he says, here he is, a light to lighten the Gentiles. That's us. That's us. Praise God. The Lord bless you. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, in Jesus' name, we ask your help now as we come to understand more fully, more completely, 
the Son of God, the message of the gospel, the hope of health and power and life in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld his glory. O oh Lord, you help us here today that we go forth and become a light that you sent. Amen. Praise God. So help us go with each one, give safety and protection and a touch from heaven for each one. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 The Lord bless you.